In this um, community, there are so many opportunities for young people, for any people, but especially young people, to live their faith, to create this sort of relationship that the Quran says at least two dozen times. Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Verily, people who have faith, amin, probably not quite faith, but that connection with the Almighty, and they follow it with deeds of righteousness. That that that's what real that's what that's what real faith is about. This connection, and expressing it on the horizontal as a manifestation of the connection that's on the vertical. And so uh, in this area, there's so many opportunities. In this room, a few days ago, we had interfaith youth for climate justice meeting. And they are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh, Jain, <laughs> right? And they are coming and saying what? If we don't do something about our planet as, as those human beings God placed here, it won't matter what religion they have if they can't breathe the air and drink the water. We have so many uh, opportunities where young people are getting together to feed the homeless. Why? Because there are opportunities for them to live their faith in that environment. And it doesn't matter what congregation they're a part of. If a young person hears through their network, and there's a lot of Facebooking and um, social networking that is pulling this fabric together. So it really becomes, on many levels, a virtual community, not a terrestrial community. And that virtual relationship allows them based on their interests, to begin to connect with each other around environmentalism, around the issues of poverty, around affordable housing, around immigration issues. The DREAM Act is, is connecting young people to say, why is it that my counterpart, a kid I went to school with all my life, now doesn't have the same life opportunities that I have because of something their parents did? And those connections are based on their moral and ethical framework that's rooted from their religion. And so, I mean, we have, I mean, it's just, we just got it going on, whether it's cleaning the Anacostia River or whether it's working the 9-11 Unity Walk to try to overcome hate. And so you have young people who are organizing on that level to say, I don't want to be Hindu, you don't want to be Muslim, Neither one of us want to be Sikh, but we definitely identify that we all have the right to be here. And what is that? It is the outcome of an interesting experiment. Some would fear that if you took especially young people and you brought them together, that they would, from different religious traditions, produce a new religion. It would be none of the others. It would be this new interfaith religion. And what we have discovered is that this engagement creates an opportunity for someone to deepen their connection with their own tradition by seeing something in someone else's tradition that they have neglected in their own. And so the work of this interfaith relationship hasn't created an opportunity for us to come together and convert one another, but an opportunity for each of us to deepen one's own relationship within one's own tradition. And there are some really significant questions that get asked. And young people are at the bastions of asking questions. Why is this? Why isn't that? This doesn't make sense. And so they talk to someone else in another tradition and say, what about this? And they say, well, well what does your tradition say? And that interrogative begins to deepen their search for what it is 
that they believe in as a fundamental truth.